Good morning, everyone, and welcome to City Hall. It is April 11th. It is obviously April, which oftentimes means showers, but unfortunately, we've had a pretty dry month so far. We're looking forward to some rain um, because we do uh, cur currently still have a drought in effect. As a reminder, we are still in stage one of our drought. The 12 month average level of the Chini Lake is at 72%, which decreased 0.9% in March. Stage two would be triggered when the 12 month average is 50 to 69% of our conservation pool level at Chini. So here are quick reminders. Wichita gets its water from two sources. Chini Reservoir, which relies on rain runoff to fill, as well as the Equus Bed Aquifer groundwater. Now, drought stages are determined by the average level of the Chini Reservoir over a year-long period within the conservation pool. Now, the city of Wichita has been conserving water and will continue to do so by taking small steps, such as keeping fountains turned off, using gray water to water trees, reducing watering on city-owned grass, and more. As people begin to plant their gardens and prep their yards for spring, we want to encourage drought-resistant planting practices. Here with us today is Abby Drott with K-State Research and Extension Office to talk about resources to help residents learn how to have a resilient garden and lawn as the drought persists. Abby? Thank you, Ms. Mayor, and thank you for having me today. My name is Abby Drought. Um, I am not the drought we're here to talk about today. I just happen to be one. <laughs> uh, I'm with K-State Research and Extension, and we are excited to partner with the city of Wichita in promoting water-conscious lawn and gardening practices. Drought and water conservation are not new topics to those of us in the horticulture field. As horticulture agents, we are always talking with the community members about ways to water lawn and gardens using best practices. The horticulture department at the Cedric County Extension Office offers a variety of resources to the Cedric County community on tips for watering less, choosing water-wise and drought-tolerant plants, and irrigating lawns, and much more. Today, I would like to share with you in the community some of the ways that the Cedric County residents can start watering more consciously. It can start by selecting the right plants for the right place in your garden, considering selecting drought tolerant plants, plants hardy for our zones, and plants appropriate for your garden, so the right plant for the right place. Plants require more water when they are young and getting established in the landscape, but once they are established, they require significantly less water, so we can reduce water in that way. Applying mulch to flower beds and around trees to conserve moisture is helpful. Eliminating weeds, which compete with desirable plants for water and nutrients. Decreasing fertilizer use, which requires more water, also will help eliminate water costs. Water lawns and gardens slowly, deeply, and infrequently. This practice encourages re root, deep root growth, avoids excess runoff from watering too quickly, and adapts plants to growing longer without water. Watering less in cooler seasons also, like spring and fall, when it's cooler, you do not need to water as often as when it is hot in the summertime. Be intentional with your watering as well. Do not rely on that irrigation box to tell you when it's time to water. Pay attention to the weather, and if we're gonna get rain and it has rained, go ahead and skip that next watering. For lawns, you can increase mowing heights, decrease fertilizer use, and aerating the lawn to improve water absorption into the soil when water is available and can increase drought tolerance. Switching to warm season turf grasses, such as buffalo grass, Bermuda grass, or zoysia grass, all three of these grasses will grow well across the state of Kansas and are much more heat and drought tolerant than tall fescue, which is one of the most popular home lawns in many parts of the state. Bermuda, zoysia, and buffalo grass all naturally thrive in the heat of the summer months, and as a result, are also naturally more drought tolerant. Residents can find publications for these topics through the K-State Research and Extension website, as well as the city website under Save Wichita Water and under Irrigation Education. In addition to providing unbiased and research-based publications, we also offer in-person events, um, 
open to the community and focused on best practice gardening practices. We have an upcoming event called the Spring Garden Fair, which is happening May 4th at the Cedric County Extension Office in our 4-H Hall. It's from 7 a.m. to 1 p.m. and offers educational and interactive booths, a plant sale benefiting our Master Gardener program, and several guided tours of our grounds where we demonstrate low water use plants, drought tolerant plants, and low water use gardening techniques. For those who cannot make our in-person event, K-State Research and Extension also offers the K-State Garden Hour, a one-hour monthly webinar that touches on a variety of gardening topics throughout the year. The next Garden Hour webinar is May 1st from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. on the topic of understanding water sources for your garden. This topic covers irrigation sources for gardens and understanding the difference between water from private wells, city water supplies, and rural water districts. This series will also cover differences in water quality, the importance of knowing what is in your water, the costs associated with each, and why you should test your water before using it. Uh, at the Extension Office in Cedric County, we also offer irrigation watering tests, so if you did wanna test your water, you could bring that to our office. If you're curious about other gardening topic, um, KSA Garden Hour topics, our KSA Garden Hour website does have an archive of all the previous topics from the past years for anybody to look at at any time. For residents with drought-related questions or general gardening questions, please reach out to our garden hotline through email or phone, and that information can be found on the Cedric County's website. Residents can also visit us in person at our response room at the Cedric County Extension Office, located off the corner of West Street and Ridge Road. And we look forward to continuing to work with the city of Wichita on water conservation and drought. Thank you very much. Appropriate last name. Thank you very much, Abby. And as a reminder, you can check out our drought level at the beginning of each month on our website, wichita.gov, which also has resources on how residents can save water apply for rebates for water saving devices and share what the city is doing to save water. Now moving on to our second topic today is housing. In case you missed it, this weekend housing staff will be hosting its next round of open houses as it continues to market and sell public housing units. The city has received approval to sell an additional 51 scattered site units in addition to the 37 previously marketed as available for sale. Open houses have been scheduled for 2 to 4 p.m. Sunday, April 14th for 22 homes in the Kenmar, Fairmount, A. Price Woodard, and Murdoch neighborhoods in central Wichita, as well as a selection of homes in south and west Wichita. The full list of properties is available on our website under real estate. We're widely marketing these properties to residents and real estate agents and are working diligently with former public housing tenants to help them buy homes if they are interested. We actually had our very first tenant purchase their home just this week. So congratulations to the new homeowner who was a previous tenant and now uh, owns her own home. In addition to making these homes available for sale, we also have another program focused on expanding and improving affordable housing options in Wichita. That is called the Affordable Housing Fund. Here to tell us more is Sarah Gooding, our Real Property Section Manager in Housing. Thank you, Mayor. And yes, we are planning a May launch for the Affordable Housing Fund, and this is strategically being paired with yet another 66 public housing units um, in two neighborhoods. And so if you're keeping track, we're up to about 150 homes on the market now. Um, this particular project will help to maintain a specific section of the public housing portfolio as affordable housing for the community. So these concentrated areas that will be part of this particular program include an area in Northeast Wichita, um, and that is in the 25th and 26th Street, Minnesota, Ash and Pyatt areas, and another area in Southwest Wichita near Meridian and Pawnee, and these homes are mostly located along Haskell and St. Clair. And so the Affordable Housing Fund is specifically focused on improving the quality of existing housing stock expanding quality affordable housing options, and promoting stability in Wichita's core. 
It focuses heavily on reinvestment in Wichita's minority communities because these are disp disproportionately impacted by housing insecurity. Additionally, the program is designed to ensure that minority developers and contractors can reasonably participate and decision making around project funding will consider the impact on minority communities through ensuring community leaders are represented as an integral part of the review committee. And so in May, the city will open a request for proposals or RFP process, and this will allow applicants to submit offers and present their vision for how their proposed projects will provide overall neighborhood and community benefit. Within responses to this RFP or request for proposals, applicants may do the following things, and this is a complex RFP with a lot of moving parts. So they can submit offers to purchase available public housing units that are in these two clusters, in these two pilot areas, and like other properties that we have on the market, the minimum offer that we can consider on these homes is the fair market appraisal value of each home. Um, applicants can also propose other qualifying projects within a quarter mile of these areas. Um, this is not limited solely to the public housing units. Um, applicants can request up to $40,000 per unit for needed renovations. A scope of work to justify that proposal will be required. Um, they can propose whether end users um, will be homeowners or renters. Um, the Affordable Housing Fund is actually an intermediate opportunity for the renovation of these units, and then at the end, they will be required to either have affordable home ownership or rental outcomes. And then applicants can also request project-based voucher subsidy, and I'll get into that just a little bit more in a moment. And so what you hear developing is that the Affordable Housing Fund actually creates a pathway that brings together multiple programs and initiatives. These converge toward the shared goal of developing and sustaining affordable housing. And so in addition to selling the public housing units and providing renovation funding, the project also commits down payment assistance for eligible home buyers at the end, and it also makes approximately 16 project-based rental vouchers available to support rental projects. And so project-based project -based vouchers are different from tenant-based vouchers, which are connected to the person. Project-based vouchers are connected to the unit and their rental assistance that helps to support that unit, which must remain affordable housing. Um, our, our department also operates a variety of rental assistance that is tied to tenant-based vouchers. And so we know this is complex. Um, throughout April and May, staff will be having many conversations throughout the community, um, different stakeholders, different entities, about the project ahead of that May launch date. Additionally, more detailed information is available on the project webpage at wichita.gov AHF. And the AHF is Affordable Housing Fund. We also encourage applicants who are interested in the project to contact us at housingdevelopment at wichita.gov and request more information on the project. Um, we will provide ongoing updates to those who are on our notification lists there. And so I want to be clear that applicants for this project, um, for the affordable housing fund side and the rehabilitation side of the project, must demonstrate relevant experience with similar types of housing development projects, as well as experience utilizing state, local, or federal funds of this nature. Applicants who don't have this experience are encouraged to reach out to create partnerships with others who do so that that partnership could bring the required experience to the project. So ultimately, the rehabilitated homes will serve income qualified home buyers or renters and information on how to apply for those opportunities won't be available anytime soon. It will be available once contracts have been awarded. And so we will keep the public and the community updated on those statuses. And so we're excited for the opportunity to not only bring these additional public housing units to the market, but also to be able to strategically reinvest in expanding quality housing options in Wichita. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate all the information regarding affordable housing. Again, uh, increasing our affordable housing stock is one of the ways that we, as a city, support our community's growth and meet the increased demand for affordable housing. 
Next week, the department will host the third annual Greater Wichita Housing Conference, where affordable housing will be one of the many topics discussed. Another key focus of that conference will be homelessness, which is a key area of focus for our community. Among the presenters at the conference will be Tamara Wright, who serves as a senior regional advisor for the U.S. Interagency Council on Homelessness, also known as USITCH, which is the only federal agency with the sole mission of preventing and ending homelessness in America. Wichita became on the radar of that department for the amazing work our community is doing towards reducing homelessness here in Wichita. Tamara will be delivering our morning keynote address on April 17th. I would like to welcome Andrew Tyree, management analyst with our housing department to tell us more about that conference as well as to show where you can find more information on our website. Andrew. Thank you, Mayor Wu. A lot of exciting things going on at the housing department, and one of those exciting things I wanted to talk about today was, or is, for the third year in a row, our department is going to be hosting the Greater Wichita Housing Conference. And that's going to take place next week on Wednesday, April 17th, and Thursday, April 18th at Century Two. This is a two-day come-and-go event, and it's completely free to attend, so we have free workshops, free information. You can't beat that. So come on down to the conference, please. Uh, we want to extend a thank you to Commerce Bank for sponsoring this year's conference yet again. They t we're going to actually be doing something a little different this year with our conference. Um, it's spread over two days, and each day is going to be um, have a target audience for each day. So on Wednesday, April 17th, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., the target audience for that day is landlords, developers, and homeless service providers. And on the second day of the conference, Thursday, April 18th, it runs from 9 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and it's geared towards residents uh, with a specific uh, focus for those who are low to moderate income. And for those of you that may not know, April is Fair Housing Month, and because of this, uh, fair housing will be an important part of both days of the conference. Uh, other topics of the conference will include the city's new retaliatory evictions ordinance, multiple breakout sessions to support the work of our homeless service providers, and an overview of currently available economic development incentives and funding to support the development of affordable housing. And finally, there will be sessions to provide info to current landlords and attract new landlords who offer their units to families who are utilizing uh, rental subsidies such as Housing First and Section 8. And that, was, that was a lot of information, um, so if you missed anything or you want to find even more information about the conference, we have all of it listed on our new and improved uh, wichita.gov. And if you just allow me a moment, uh, you can follow along and I'll show you how easy it is to access that information. And so if you go to the city's main page, wichita.gov, you can scroll down and you'll see this latest news section, and you'll have to maybe have to hit the arrows to find it, but you'll come across the 2024 Greater Wichita Housing Conference. And if you just click there, there'll be just some information about the conference, the days, um, kind of the topics that it's geared towards. Um, but if you'll notice, there's a link here, and this link is going to take you to the Housing and Community Services Department's main page. And right away when you come to that page, you'll notice right front and center, uh, we have information about the conference. And if you scroll down, there'll be just some information um, about the, um, the days and the, the uh, topics. But what we wanted to show you specifically is that we have our conference agenda posted. And so if you click the link there, that takes you uh, to the agenda so you can uh, check out all the all the different sessions and again this is come and go free to attend so if there's just one session you want to go to by all means come for that one session or if you want to stay for the whole day great um, but it's all right here um, listed out with times and the the room numbers at Century 2 for both days and if we just back up uh, you'll come down and it'll be some information about parking so there is a fee um, to park at Century 2 and if you click the link there, it shows you some parking and payment information. You'll need to download the Park Mobile app um, to pay. It's a flat fee of $5. 
Um, but again, there's a little map here that shows Century 2, the paid parking, and just uh, south of Century 2, across the street of Waterman, um, there is a um, public parking that's free, so you can utilize that as well. And just some more information, we have three different short videos uh, about the conference, kind of mini commercials. Um, and what I want to give a, a big uh, thank you to our communications team and legal team for helping us uh, to kind of, um, do these videos. They turned out really well, um, so please go watch them. Um, but yeah, so there's, you can find all the information you, you would need about the conference here on our, on our site. And finally, um, with the housing department and the city in general, we are committed to making sure uh, folks that uh, would like to attend the conference but uh, who may not speak English or who need sign language interpretation, we want to make sure they have equal access to both days' um, events. So if you require uh, oral interpretation in a language other than English, please call 316-462-3721 or email Shara Horton at S. H-O-R-T-O-N at wichita.gov. That's S. Horton at wichita.gov. Uh, thank you again, Mary Wu, for giving us the opportunity to promote this uh, wonderful event. Again, thank you very much, Andrew. Look forward to the conference. Uh, once again, it is next Wednesday and Thursday, and it is free to the public with an audience on Wednesday regarding landlords, those uh, providers for homelessness, and then on Thursday, uh, individuals who may be low or moderate income individuals that may just want to learn more. Again, uh, the Greater Wichita Housing Conference, you can find more information on our website. Now to move on to golf, there's a lot going on in Wichita this spring, even though it is a bit dry. Uh, this does not prevent golfers from coming out. And in case you missed it, Junior Golf is celebrating 50 official years here in Wichita. And they're recognizing April 13th as Junior Golf Day. Here to tell us more is golf director, Jesse Kaufman. Jesse. All right, thank you, Ms. Mayor. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Jesse Kaufman. I'm the director of the golf division. Um, and as she said, I'm here today to talk about Junior Golf Day. This will be the, uh, the first time we've put on this event. And Junior Golf is one of the most important aspects of what we do in the golf division. And it's very important to us to make sure that any child or kid that wants to play golf has the opportunity, um, regardless of circumstances. We want to make sure they have, have the opportunity to be involved in this great game. So. Um, this Saturday at Tex Consolver Golf Course, it's April the 13th, from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., we're going to host what we're calling Junior Golf Day. And basically, this is just a giant celebration of everything that we do with Junior Golf in, in Wichita. Um, and it's a lot. Um, we're, of course, we're going to be talking about the programs that we host in-house, which is, um, we have several. We do SNAG, which is snarty, starting new at golf. Um, it's for the, the smaller kids oversized clubs, and it's just a real fun way to introduce them to the game. Um, we have our Hook a Kid on Golf programs where the, the kids leave with the brand new set of golf clubs at the end of the camp. Um, we have junior developmental camps, junior competitive leagues, several others. Um, and then we also want to focus on three key partners that we have with Junior Golf through the city of Wichita. One of those, she mentioned, mentioned the Junior Golf, Wichita Junior Golf Foundation is celebrating their 50th year. So this is a perfect year for us to start this Junior Golf Day. Um, Wichita Junior Golf Foundation is done all through donations and fundraising. Uh, we have about nearly 600 kids that go through their program in the summer. Um, it's a phenomenal program. And over the last, I believe, five or six year, the years, they've given away over $350,000 in scholarships through their program. So it's, it's, uh, they do a great job, and we're very lucky uh, to, to partner with that group. Um, another group that we work with, the First Tee of Greater Wichita. Uh, First Tee is a national program, so a lot of people may have heard of it, uh, but the local chapter here is phenomenal. We're very um, honored to ha have them have their main campus at McDonald Golf Course, um, and they do a lot. Golf is the theme of their programming, but they focus on life lessons that these kids can learn through the game of golf and carry on and be successful as they grow through their, through their lives. Um, and then finally, Golf Marathon, which is a program that 
a lot of people I don't think know about, and I really want to help spread the word about this, but any child, any kid 17 years old or younger can play golf at, our, at any of our golf courses for free, no questions asked. They scan a QR code. Um, this group raises money, uh, to, and then we bill them. So they cover the green fees for all kids 17 years of age and, and younger. It's a phenomenal program and one of the very few in the country uh, to do this type of thing. So um, we, this Junior Golf Day is just going to be a giant celebration. Tex Consolver Golf Course has a huge driving range and practice area, so we're just going to turn it into a giant party uh, for the kids and for the parents. Um, some of the things we're going to be doing, we're going to have music, of course, playing throughout the entire event. Um, we're going to have free hot dogs and drinks for the kids, um, contest, giveaway, clinics. We'll be doing some one-on-one -on -one lessons. I'll have several um, instructors out. Um, we're going to have inflatables out. we got some, depending on the wind, hopefully it's not too bad. We have some uh, a giant hippo that's 12 feet tall and 15 feet long that the kids try to hit golf balls into its mouth. And uh, really, we're trying to set it up so kids of all ages, from the smallest to the small that can barely hold a golf club up to 18 years old, are going to have a great time and, and have something there that they're really going to enjoy. So um, we please invite anyone. It's free. You don't have to register. Just show up at Texan Solver between 1 and 5 this Saturday um, and help us celebrate and, and get the word out about all the junior programming we do. And, and uh, we, we hope to have a great turnout, and I think it'll be a, a great day for everyone. So we look forward to seeing everyone there. Thank you. Okay, so we talked about a free event on Saturday which is perfect because we have lots of community-wide events that are free for the community, and that's just one example. Then on Sunday, it's Open Streets ICT, kicking it off in 2024. Um, after April 13th, we have that uh, Sunday, April 14th event, which is called Open Streets ICT, and this one will be right outside of WSU. Here to tell us more is Nicola Pack with, director, with the Wichita Office of Engagement, Director of Engagement. Good morning, thank you, and it's Nikayla Pack, almost. <laughs> but yes, we are very excited to um, have our second annual Open Streets ICT at WSU in Shocker neighborhood. This will be our second year out on 17th Street from Oliver to about Volusia, and it will be filled with um, almost 100 vendors registered. We have live music. Ulrich Museum is also celebrating, I believe it's their 50th, and they'll have an art market out there, um, lots of activities, walking, have your dogs out there, biking. So come out and enjoy some um, sun with us. I think it's gonna be a, a hot one. Thank you very much. Opportunities to bring community together are important to the city of Wichita, and we urge everyone to get out into the community to connect with our neighbors and see all the wonderful things that our community has to offer. Finally, I want to thank those that ask, who asked questions during our social media budget town hall on street maintenance this past Tuesday. And now we want to encourage you to be part of the next town hall and ask questions during that uh, process, which will focus on crime prevention. That social media town hall will be held this upcoming Monday at five o'clock. Uh, and it, again, it's a social media platform uh, town hall, so people can ask questions by submitting them on our social media platforms, and staff will be on hand to answer questions regarding crime prevention. Uh, we did ask staff to hold these uh, town halls, both on crime prevention and street maintenance, because they were the most pressing issues that our community and our residents identified in our annual survey, which was held in the fall of 2023. You can see a full list of ways that we engage with this year's budget by going to wichita.gov slash budget. And I have council member uh, J.B. Johnston, who represents District Number 5, Northwest Wichita. Uh, as you know, I like to share some of the good news, and when we have council members present, we like to hear what's good news in their community. Thank you, Mayor, and we'll just call this Good News Thursday. 
the new dog park is going up in northwest Wichita, just north of Central and a little bit west of Ridge Road. We're really excited about that, as Wichita has been named one of the top five cities in the country to own a dog. Why is this important? This is important because when people are looking at communities, they want a dog and, and uh, actually a pet friendly uh, society or community. So it's exciting. It's also maybe a reason why Wichita is also one of the top five communities to move to. So uh, more good news. I think Wichita has got a lot more top five coming and uh, there's two of them right there. So uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Johnston. Uh, some other good news in our community. Just this morning, I had the opportunity to be present during a ribbon cutting ceremony for the re relocation and expansion of Balco, uh, a manufacturing company right here in our community. They just opened up in North Wichita, and so congratulations to Balco. And then yesterday, the community got to celebrate a $1 million investment into WSU Tech through the um, Haas Foundation to open up their innovation lab. So again, just lots of good news in our community and we're grateful uh, that people are investing in Wichita and the people of Wichita. So at this time, we will answer any questions from our media partners. The question was about Town West uh, Square and the water shutoff. It is still currently shut off at this time. Have you guys heard from the property owner? The property owner, we have not heard from yet. Um, have you guys heard anything from the nonprofits in there that are maybe looking for another place to go? No, um, I've heard that one of our nonprofits has been relocated already. There are a couple of nonprofits that are at Town West Square. Uh, we have not heard from several of them, but we do know that one of those nonprofits has already relocated out of that building. And your first 90 days of mayor is coming up, or um, how's the first 90 days gone? Has it gone how you expected, and what do you hope to accomplish in the next 90 days? Thank you for that question. Today is actually day number 92 that this new council has been uh, working together. I focus on every single day on connections, collaborations, and communication, and that is how I will move forward, working with six council members that represent six districts in our community, uh, working together to make this community a better place. But we do have some tough decisions coming up regarding the budget, and we want community to really understand that we are trying to be data driven when it comes to decision making. And when we had a community wide survey in the fall of 2023, and the top three uh, items that people want us to focus on are crime prevention, street maintenance, and economic development. Those are the three things that we will also be focusing on because again, that is what community asked us to do. What kind of things are citizens asking for on those three topics? Uh, when it comes to crime prevention, people want to know that we are curbing the numbers. Uh, I know that Police Chief uh, Joe Sullivan has one of his three main priorities to curb the number of violent crime numbers here in our community. When it comes to street repair, as you know, uh, we have an app as well as our website that tries to remind people that they can be active about reporting issues. One in particular is reporting issues regarding potholes. And when you report that on our website or on the app, within 24 hours, we fill those potholes. And again, um, we fill about 70,000 potholes every year. So if community wants to help us by identifying where those are uh, and reporting them on the website, that is another way to help with street maintenance. And the final one regarding economic development, it is really about jobs. And as I mentioned just this morning, a company in our community decided to not just relocate but expand um, their location. And so that means jobs for people. And we appreciate that businesses, job creators in our community continue to focus on giving jobs for our community members, but we also need to focus on bringing in new businesses into our community because we need more opportunities for Wichitans. And so when it comes to economic development, we need to focus on, again, uh, keeping the businesses we have, making them feel welcome that they want to expand, and then those who are not in our community, 
Wichita is open for business. So what are some of your goals for the next 90 days? So the first 90 days really was a lot of uh, learning for a lot of the new council members as well as myself. Uh, the next 90 days really is going to be focusing on that plan. And the next 90 days will really target the budget. The budget is already in process at the current moment. As you know, we started community engagement with the budget. Uh, right now, departments are having their presentations to the city manager. And eventually, uh, between April and July, when the first proposed draft will be given to the council, there will be much more community engagement. So again, the next 90 days is really listening to community and encouraging community to tell us, um, are these the three priorities you want us to focus on? Crime, streets, economic development. In the next, next year, you're going to be running the deficit in the next year. So there's going to be some big decisions to make. How are you going to go about trying to decide what to keep and what to cut or where to cut? You know, difficult decisions will have to be made in the upcoming months and years. As you know, the budget uh, is with limited dollars that we can work with. So we will have to stay data driven, again, focusing on that community wide survey that told us that community wants us to focus on crime, streets, and economic development. And then really continuing to engage with community, listening to the priorities that uh, community wants us, again, to look at while they cover the three topics of crime, streets, and economic development. Thank you very much. You guys have a great weekend and see you all at uh, Junior uh, Golf Day and Open Streets ICT.